Hello, my monstrosities. Hello once again. Today I bring to you a DVD discussion video. And I know I've talked a lot about the Tours of Torment PTB, and I know a lot of people are. But I think I've waited long enough with the dust shuttling after the developer of the developer developer update to kind of give final thoughts on something that has been on my mind like everyone else. I've been pretty positive of the Skull Merchant because I hate discussions in which somebody is clearly not exercising, trying to make something work, right? But at the end of the day, I do still believe, as you can see from the title, or rather the discussion from the title, that the chapter was rushed. But not for the same reasons other people have said it. And let me tell you why. A lot of people have talked about, oh, this chapter must have been rushed, and the, the school merchant is so bad, and they probably started working on her right after the night. Having friends that have worked in game dev, um, having thought that was a route I wanted to work on in one part of my life, I'm going to say that probably isn't what happened. Now, mind you, behavior could do things different, so you could still be right with that. But, nine times out of ten, the concept for the Skull Merchant started maybe back when Wesker was finished. And then, modeling and stuff could have been wrapping up with the Knight's PTB. And then, as you can see, they were already... Buff's plan for the time that we finally got to the PTB ourselves. Instead, what I think happened there was behavior, kind of what I said, is what I'm worried about after the eruption nerf. I think behavior has effectively been scared of... Trying new things, like wild things, I should say. Not new things, wild things. I think the community has effectively scared behavior off from creating the next nurse and the next eruption. And before you start angrily typing in my comment section, do I believe that we need another one of those? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I think... In efforts to not make another one of those situations. They're going to continue to play everything terribly safe. Let's be real. The issue with the last this release and the last release is everything got put terribly safe. It felt bad to use the knight because at base the power is going to make you win or lose based on the map. At base when he was released and on the PTB. Because survivors are getting way too much information on powers. Why on earth would you tell survivors they are now being tracked by the bad guy? When there's a claw trap in their arm that kind of just, you know, suggests that. Or let them see that you are summoning the ghost right next to them? The ghost. Right? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what these half measures are. And the claw trap leaves after you hook somebody. Or rather, when you down them. So, you can't really even leave them on the ground to generate pressure to come back to them later. Yeah, it gives them a fighting chance to, you know, not get slugged. But... The character doesn't have anything. To apply pressure, that is. In the current state. Now, mind you, after the dev update, yeah, there's a bit more pressure. But it's also immediately taken away. I've already talked about that. 
But I think that's what that is. I don't think that's a product of rushing. I think that's a product of being scared to try wild things. In the event you upset the four of the 4v1 side that is this game. But what I will say is my clues that this chapter might have been rushed is the perks. If you've been following my short form content, whether that be TikTok or YouTube Shorts, or want to go check those out now, I'd appreciate that. Um, you'll see, I found a lot of exceptions to rules that are already established that should not, should not be working. First, I'll talk about the ones... Well, first I'll talk about one where there's no exception and just dumb. Then I'll talk about an exception that is dumb. And then I'll talk about egregious. First, background player. It got the same hit that Eruption got. Where instead of making something possibly work by tweaking numbers and things like that, you've just made it worse like unusual unusual unusually unusual to the point of everything right like background player was the one that basically said hey farm my friend like tunnel them you unhook somebody had sprint burst for six seconds a lot of people were just like well just make it the person that got unhooked gets it we already have that perk guardian but if you're going to make teamwork perks why not make it so that it's kind of like a reverse death bound to an extent, right? The person that you unhook, both of you gain haste as long as you're within certain meters of each other. And go from there, kind of like the one that you've already did with Blood Pact again, that teamwork perk. I don't know, but I just felt that there was room to change that without making it so that now you have no autonomy over your own perk. It's dependent on the bad guy picking somebody up and triggering, so you'll just get exhausted on a generator randomly. And you're just like, well, you can go for saves with it. You just put on sprint burst at all. You just 99 sprint burst, and you have complete control over when you pop that. Like, what is that? So that's clue number one that perks, at the very least, were not thought out. Then we go to the one that has odd triggers, which were th which was Thwack. That was the perk in which after you get a hook, the next time you break a pallet or wall, make people within X amount of meters scream and reveal themselves for a little bit. And again, they're playing it too safe. I don't know why it was even thought that it should have a window of time because it's it's a pallet or wall like i don't that what why i don't care if you make it 75 seconds that i shouldn't lose my perk after hooking somebody when all it does is reveal locations after breaking because i haven't kicked a pallet and like you you're doing good if you haven't needed to kick something Nine times out of ten. If you found a way to play the game for 75 seconds without kicking or breaking something, that's probably, probably you doing good. I mean, or you could just be trying to farm Bloodlust for no reason, but yeah. Don't know. But why do I say that had exceptions to the rule? Well, it expressly stated, you break a pallet or wall, and if you've been following my short-form content on TikTok and shorts, and or shorts, um, one, I appreciate you, and it was triggering on Dissolution and Spirit Fury, so you were running into the same issue of background player will now run into, of which there are times where you have no autonomy over it, which is bad. If you were a pig trying to keep a head pop build with this, yeah, I guess you just don't run End Fury or Dissolution because it might trigger at times that you really 
could do without. Now, mind you, that also means you could trigger it more often, but it also can be wasted very easily when you still need to get a hook to make it active again. So there's that. But then we come to my prime example as to why this chapter was probably rust. Game of foot. Not only was it triggering with dissolution and spirit fury, who once again state once you break a pallet or generator or whatever. So Game of Foot was the one that um, based on chase time, if you hit somebody that you've chased the longest with the base, they become the obsession. And if you break something in the chase while chasing the obsession, you gain haste for X amount of seconds. It has generated a lot of problems. And at first, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that it was out of balancing with the biffle, save the best for last. But that's not even the case. So not only was it triggering on dissolution and spirit fury when it says you. It was making you gain stacks when you shouldn't on things like Remember Me or Triggering Dark Devotion because those should happen after the obsession loses a health state and the person wasn't the obsession beforehand, so why is that triggering? But most of all, Rancor. Now, it's at the end of the game, so technically those two perks make you have no add on steroids. But, why is that the case? Somebody that wasn't previously the obsession, becoming the obsession after getting hit, is on the floor? And can be taken out? That's insane. But back to why I thought that this might have just been, you know, for balancing sake, I thought they thought it would be too insane to gain a stack with the Biffle, while also gaining a stack of Remember Me and... Dark Devotion and taking somebody out of the game, locking your own stacks in with Rancor, but uh, that's actually what can happen. That's exactly what can happen. Because you still gain a stack because that person isn't your obsession, but you are gaining stacks because they now are your obsession? Those are two opposites that should not be going off at the same time. And I thought that would be, you know... The thing like balancing, because if you're gaining a stack, meaning you have reduced cooldown, and you're now chasing somebody who is now your obsession, and then break something, and then gaining haste, yeah, once you hit them, you'll lose the two stacks again, right? But before then, you could go from 7 to 8, break something, have haste, have better cooldown, and then hit them, and then just go down to 6? That's crazy to me. Right, That's like essentially making whatever person you wanted to use this on the Death Slinger method where, yeah, you'll lose two in the end, but did it matter? Because they're still down and you still have six at the end, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's what makes me think that this chapter was rushed. In the event that they haven't played something way too safe, it's not game-breaking. But it obviously isn't working as stated, which usually isn't the case. So either they push this out so they can get all hands on deck for the next chapter, which I believe is the anniversary chapter, if I'm if I'm hearing that correctly. Or I don't know. But that's my take on the whole is this chapter rush situation. Let me know what you think. Let me know if what I said made any sense. Hopefully it did, but yeah, I want to hear your thoughts behind it. If you liked the video, like it, got a comment for me, comment, and until next time, peace out, my monstrosities.